Recap time. So I want to go from here to here, taking at least two of these with me. The problem is my tech tree is looking more like a small shrub, but I've identified this leaf and this leaf as the essential equipment for this mission. So after threatening Von Kerman with physical violence, I got to see the science archives where I could tell exactly where all the missing pieces of science were located, allowing us to put together a series of crazy but fun missions to gather all the scientific data around the Kerbal Space Center and hopefully reach our mystical target of 180 science points. Oh, what a recap. Wasn't that good fun? Anyway, guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Center, and we have things to do. First, we're going to do is zoom through until daytime because, you know, it, it's much nicer to do stuff during the daylight than not. Uh, the other thing you will notice at the top of my board right there, we have a 100 of 180 science points. So we have science to be done. Now, looking at Von Kerman's records, uh, I note that the only real places that we can get science done is EVA in the upper atmosphere, or EVA in the materials bay, sorry, in the upper atmosphere, and a close orbit. Uh, when I say the only science available, the only science available that we've done for the goo canisters, but not everything else. So let's grab our EVA abilities for up in orbit, and let's go have a look at the contracts and see if there's anything that we can do that will aid us in our bid to, to get all these sciences. Obviously, we're only going just up and out of the atmosphere. So this suborbital Separatron uh, mission here seems to be the winner. It gets us enough money um, to uh, pay for the flight giving us a budget of around 15 grand, which is not bad, um, and gives us things to do. So if we head our way into the VAB, I can show you this monstrosity right here. Those things on top are not Mickey Mouse's, they are in fact materials canisters, or well, material science canisters, because that's the science we need to do. Uh, I also have Bob in the cockpit because we're, look, we're after maximum science here. Lifting our precious payload of scientist and science canisters, we have a central LV45 engine down there, two cheap ass solid boosters on the outside, set at a slight angle to induce this spin because Bob cannot SAS and I really cannot fly this ship straight. Uh, as you will find out when we jettison our um, jettison our, our boosters there. And then we have a little bit of wobbles here. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling hard. But I think, no, I can do this. I can pull this together. All we've got to do is look at that light, tiny dot at the top. And Bob, Bob's not a terrible pilot. He's not a great pilot. He, he, as I say, he doesn't have access to the SAS. And that, that did, make, um, did make things a little bit awkward. But as all we were doing was going straight up, I had every confidence in him here. Um, so we, our lifting burn is done. We are looking to literally just pierce the very top of the atmosphere so that we can get into the, the, the near space science uh, routine. Uh, we fired the Separatrons, got ourselves our uh, budget back. This vessel, by the way, um, took off at something like nine and a half grand. So I, I think I did quite well there at keeping within budget. Actually. Um, allocating ourselves a little little bit of extra budget so we can actually make some money on this flight not just get all the science um, so we got out did our eva that possibly the best um spend of half my money i could have possibly done it did cost me half my money to get the um was it the astronaut complex um good enough to be able to do the EVAs. I had forgotten to do the materials bay um, for the upper atmosphere on the way up, but that's okay because, you know, what goes up must come down and all that stuff. So we can just, um, you know, wait wait for long enough to fall back through the atmosphere or time accelerate, both, both works. Grab that final science and then just ride away down. And whilst we wait for the pull of gravity to guide our way through this atmosphere, we're going to talk about the invalidity of the what goes up must come down argument. Now, given my, my new knowledge of orbital mechanics that has only really been given to me through the glories of Kerbal Space Program, surely that it should now read what goes up must come down unless travelling fast enough forwards to maintain orbital velocity. Like... I don't know, there's a lot of sayings nowadays that really haven't changed with the times in our knowledge, and, and I think we really could. Anyway, landing has happened, Bob is safe, we're going to muck around in the water a bit and recover the vessel. Uh, 167 science is our total, it's still like 13 short. Um, right, well, we're going to have to go off and do something else for that. Hey guys, welcome back to real real time commentary, or what I'm calling real time commentary, because obviously all this is in the past to you. But to me right now, I am controlling this mouse as I'm talking. Uh, right, so you will see up here that we've got like uh, what is it, 13 points of science short, and that that that's bad. That's really bad. We need to come up with a plan of how to deal with that. Now, ooh, no, 
no, no. My plan involves one of these contracts, of course, because we need to we need to make money, okay? It, in fact, involves this contract here, because we are at no point going to be able to do any of the others uh, as easily as we can do this one. All right, so we're going to take that, and the other thing we're going to do is we're going to spend a lot of money again. Uh, we are going to spend enough money to upgrade this now this is again quite a quite a chunk but i want that i want to be able to lift up something higher than 18 tons because that is definitely stopping me from getting up into orbit with a little bit of extra to play because now that i've done that i'd also like to where is it take this one on this will give us more than enough science a fair whack of extra Kabolian credits and give us access to the tiny engine on the bottom right down there there we go that's the that's the part we're talking about that tiny little engine and i present to you the janus uh this is a vehicle named after the gods of transitions and journeys which i think is particularly fitting as this is the vehicle that will get us the science to take us to the moon i'm not sure whether this one itself will be taking us to the moon but I think that's quite a transitional period in our space career. Oh, I think it is anyway. So all we really need to do now is throw a lander under... Uh, sorry, lander. Throw a launcher underneath this and launch it. And we are on our way off to the beauties of orbit with quite a bulky vessel, actually. Now, we could have saved a lot of... Uh, oh, no, this is not... I want to look up here. We could have saved a lot of issues if we had got rid of all these science uh, majiggers in the middle here. The problem, well, not the problem. The thing I wanted to do with them is get up into uh, the higher orbit so that we can do the, the higher orbit science. As we already have all the, the science for the low orbit here. And as we can move up to double time acceleration, I get to tell you about all the anxieties that I had for this mission, particularly climbing up at this point here. My first one has been... Has, ha as has been pointed out, wow, that's a bit of a tongue twister, on the um, Kerbal, for, uh, Kerbal group that I'm part of, uh, I do make my um, gravity turns very, very late. Uh, now, I carried on with this because tr I did some simulations in uh, a test world, and using this vehicle type, if I turned over any earlier than what I did just now, I do not make it up into orbit. So I don't know, but maybe it's just something to do with the way I fly. I, I, obviously, I'm not a rocket scientist. I do try to be one at times, you know, in, in real life and in, in Kerbal here. You know, I have managed to blow up some chemical propellant on the floor. Never really got it off the ground, but I digress. Not only was I worried about my flight plan, I was also worried about the uh, facilities back at home. Now, building this rocket, I had used my entire 30 part limit, which it, to me seems a bit of overkill if we're, if we're going for the 30 parts, especially if we had asparagus but we, we don't at this time, so I'm kind of using that as my excuse. But I, I thought I would be able to take a 30 part ship to the moon. Um, that this would be great, uh, and I'm definitely going to be aiming for that, uh, trying to make a moon vessel without uh, upgrading the VAB next time. But we'll see how that runs. I mean, given how this went, you, you'll see I've already dropped my entire lander stage and I'm now, I mean, uh, you know, I'm 1,500 meters per second up into orbit. This is, this is quite, a, quite a decent velocity. And with the way that I change, um, you know, I wait until Apple apps and make more efficient burns and stuff like that, I, I do think we have a bit more fuel efficiency here than I'm actually using. So without the manoeuvre nodes or the patched conics or anything like that, uh, I am doing everything by dead reckoning, which, as I have played Kerbal for quite a, quite a time now, isn't overly difficult. I can, like, use my mind powers to go back in time and remember what it is I had to do to make the thing that I'm trying to do happen. I would... I would shudder to think what would happen if I was uh, trying to do this fresh. I, I, yeah, I would be definitely watching people like myself to find out how to do it. Anyway, we've reached the circularization burn, a circularized burn, uh, and it's time to perform a test. Now, for once, we find the drop down, uh, the, the right click drop down menu that does that allows us to do the test so we don't have to dump our lifting stage well the the orbital stage quite yet which is which is all good because it's time to well it's time to drift round orbit and uh, try and get our mine and my friends here orbits very closely aligned now the problem with this is that i have a very very low boredom threshold you can already see that we're at double speed and this is taken forever already and i'm not really catching up with him very very quickly so i have a change of plan we're like right okay 
Time to go get us some science. Now, if you cast your minds way back to the beginning of this launch, I was talking about the extra science majiggers that we had stuck in between the uh, the fuel tank and the engine, uh, and that was specifically for this mini mission that we're going to do here. So the first thing I'm doing is pushing my Apple apps up out of um, well, up into outer space. That's the uh, 250 kilometer mark away from the planet, uh, and we're just going to drift round ever so listly up towards our Apple apps because, as I say, this is the point where we're up high enough to be able to get those brand new tasty sciences so straight off we've got the materials bay and the goo canister uh get ourselves a crew report done and then it's time to get jeb out and have a little fly around Woo! eva report goes nicely and we get back in and that was pretty much all we're going so there we go that that was all the science collected wasn't that great so now i use my uh eccentric orbit here to bring ourselves closer in with our friend R Riven? Riven? R I can't remember the, the Kerbal's name there. It was something like that anyway. Now, now I'm figuring, well, I'm figuring that our orbit earlier was smaller so we were catching up. Now obviously because it's bigger we're going to be um, letting him catch up as opposed to us catching up to him. Um, so the first thing I do is push my periaps to it's just outside his orbit as well because we we don't want a little bit down the bottom where we're then catching him up again. That that would be horrible. That's that's two steps forward, one back scenario. That that that's really not what we're doing. Of course, this does mean we've got all sorts of issues with the time warps where we're passing through all the different boundaries. So we we can go to like a thousand time warp, a hundred time warp, and then fifty down at the bottom. Uh, though to be fair, that was kind of half the the point of the periaps down burn down the bottom there was to push it up beyond the 50 mark so you are witnessing right here the point where i realized that i should have stopped an orbit beforehand and i'm like okay well it's time to bring our orbit down smaller than his again um because we catch up in smaller increments than he catches up with us because obviously we've got less room to go smaller before we hit the atmosphere than we have to go bigger uh and we very gently very longly and very boringly spin around this orbit maybe five or six times before we get to a point where i'm like hey you know what we can possibly look for him and in fact we are close enough now that i'm starting to think maybe it's time to bring at least a few of my markers into line with him like so i take a, a moment to see how high how high his orbit is check where my apple apps is bring them down into some sort of like well very similar numbers uh, and then just kind of cruise around a bit trying my best to spot him from the window because at this present moment in time i cannot click on him and select select him as a target i've really i've got to do it um from within the the the, the staging view it turns out I, i'm not sure why this is I, I really wish we could have done it from further away because it would have solved me like so many issues but it's okay this this is almost entire mission is done by dead reckoning so we just there he is right there look at that brilliant so we have to do things like this we spot him off in the distance and i cannot tell you how much of an issue it was trying to click on him speeding past my screen at over like 50 kilometers away okay so right now what we're trying to do is wait until he is the closest he can possibly be i have no idea how close my close encounter is going to be because obviously we're missing all that information off of the orbital view vexing but not not entirely difficult uh, and then when i realize that we're, we're probably as close as we're going to be i spend some time first burning through all the fuel in that orbital stage that i had left and now we're going to use the tiny engine that we were originally sent up here to test to try and bring our orbit into like some something that's going to bring into some sort of like impactor state ideally I mean, it's quite nice being able to set up an orbit where you can guarantee that you're going to smash yourself into him. Makes things a lot easier. And then we just begin this process of uh, refining our orbit. Like we drift a little bit closer, uh, and then when we're in, within a certain distance, I take some time to both slow down and realign my orbit. You'll see that I'm um, targeting a little bit off of the target reticle and trying to push it towards the pink one because that's how we know that they line up well. And already we're within three kilometers here. It goes incredibly well. Um, <coughs> personally, I'm more than a little bit proud of how I did here. I, I really thought once I got up into orbit and I realized how low of the assistance I've got um, I, and realized that I was gonna have to be doing this all by dead reckoning, um, I, I really didn't think we were gonna do it with the fuel allowed. And as you can see, I have quite a bit left in my tank. Indeed, we are down to less than a kilometre. So I just drift a little bit and let them catch up. Bring my orbit, well, bring my target 
relative speed that's the word i'm looking for bring my relative speed down to less than 10 meters per second and then i'm like hey this engine's a bit bit overkill for what i'm trying to do here perhaps it's time to swap over to the kerbal uh and indeed oh raven was his name raven what a name i like that name that's an awesome name okay anyway so we are going to switch across with our square brackets here do a little bit of a thrust away from the ship because obviously we are running towards it at quite a distance and then just just drive in it was it was literally as simple as that once i'd managed to bring it that close together i was overjoyed at this point i could not believe how how well that particular part of the mission went and now of course we have the uh ever troublesome trying to bring ourselves back to the kerbal space center so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put my parry up somewhere about 20 kilometers over the the water beyond uh, the space center because this is where i believe it to be uh, where i believe to be the the, the ideal trajectory to to land us right there um as it turns out i was a little bit off as you can see we've barely crossed the desert here and already i'm starting to get some like pretty serious atmospheric drag uh i decided to put the time acceleration up to the maximum possible to try and actually kind of drop some of the physics fr frames i know it's a, it's a bit meta playing like that but i was hoping that if we're traveling quicker uh there's less deceleration being applied because we're going through the frames four times faster than normal and uh, hopefully we'll go a little bit further i don't know whether that worked or not but we are coming in for a landing in the ocean here next to the next to the desert and these retrograde and prograde markers have been absolutely invaluable during this whole process i just need to say that these are a beautiful addition to the game so we're going to slow ourselves down and i pop my parachutes quite early here um about 100 100 meters up i said i say early lots of people have asked me why i open my parachute so late again it's because i'm a really low boredom threshold and and having to plummet those 500 meters without parachutes is is difficult Wow, so that's the sciencing done, and we've got ourselves a crew, new crew member. I think we've done incredibly well today, guys. Uh, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure of Gathering Science. I will see you next time when we're going to the moon. Bye!